on university fees. I think we have a quorum. Uh, if you would join me in prayer, please. Kind, gracious, heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for the positions that you have put us in, not to do our will, but to seek to do your will. I pray, Lord, that you would give us the wisdom and discernment that we need to set good policy, fair policy for the state of Georgia. I pray that you guide our decisions, our conversations, and our thoughts, Lord, that they'd all be pleasing in your sight. These things we pray in your heaven, your son's name. Amen. Okay, let me outline kind of what my plan for, for the study committee is. Uh, this will probably be the last general meeting that we have to, to hear testimony. We have a sign-up sheet in front. If anyone would like to sign up, we have one so far uh, who wants to speak. I think we have pretty much exhausted the, the topic on getting input. Uh, what my plans are, we'll have the uh, this hearing today. I'd like to ask uh, all of the committee members, if you would, to uh, make any recommendations that you may have for the study committee, if you'd get them to me by Friday. I plan on having another meeting next week while we're in session. I don't know what day. It's going to depend on our schedules, but in order to... Uh, avoid having another call meeting and incurring the cost of that we'll do it while we're here and so i just we'll keep you updated on on what that scheduling of that meeting would be um, i would like to say thank you to the uh, study committee members for your participation and i want to thank senator harrell for your interest in this i know this topic affects a lot of stu uh, college students in the state of georgia and it's our desire to find uh, a path forward that makes sense for the state and makes sense for the students in the university system. Uh, Senator Harrell, would you like to say, have any remarks uh, to start with? I've pretty much left this meeting to, se uh, to Senator Harrell to call anyone that she'd like to or introduce whatever remaining testimony she may like to introduce at this time. And. Um, that's pretty much what the meeting today will consist of. Senator Harrell, what's your number, please, ma'am? Well, that's nine. Mm -hmm. This it's must be ten. 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 Oh, your number's missing. <laughs> she had to put, there's nine and 11. Okay, ten. <laughs> Deductive <laughs> reason. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, How's the sound? Can everybody hear okay? Okay. Yes, I only have one speaker for for today um i worked hard on getting other speakers but here's here's the problem that the issue is about uh, affording school particularly if you're a part-time student that has to work and how that ends up being more expensive to to get a degree if you have to work and therefore reduce your your class load to compensate for that work schedule well, it turns out that these students who have to work their way through school um, don't have time <laughs> to come down to the Capitol um, to address the committee, um, particularly at, at the last minute. So I am going to have um, the one speaker come forward uh, who is a graduate student, and then I'm going to say a few words on behalf of the students who are working so incredibly hard they don't have time to come down here. Okay, uh, our speaker today is uh, Mr. Bryant Barnes graduate student at University of Georgia. Mr. Barnes. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can, I'm not. Yeah. All right. Let me. Uh, Chairman Tippins, thank you. Uh, that, that may not work. Maybe. Good. Can you all hear me? Yes. Good. Okay. All right. Good deal. I'll try to stay close to the mic. <clears throat> Chairman Tippins, thank you. Uh, for letting me speak today. Senator Harold, thank you for inviting me and also for helping us fight uh, this fight for a while now. Um, I'm here as a graduate student from UGA and here to talk about the special institutional fee in particular. Uh, this was a fee that was um, meant to be a kind of uh, makeup for um, budget cuts after the 2008 Great Recession. And the fee, which was originally supposed to be temporary, has become anything but. And uh, I just wanted to talk 
particularly about kind of how this fee in particular is uh, problematic for a few different reasons. One is that the special institutional fee acts as tuition. Um, it is kind of, uh, there are no specific earmarks to this fee. Um, university administrators are able to pull from this fund um, and use it as they, at their discretion, it is a discretionary fund. Um, however, uh, despite it being tuition by another name, um, it is not counted. Uh, in things like the Hope and Zell Miller scholarships. And from my perspective, uh, as a graduate student who is a teaching assistant at the University of Georgia, uh, we get tuition waivers, um, all but $25. Uh, and if this fee were classified as tuition, which um, even from conversations that I've had with uh, Ms. Tracy Cook, who is with the University System of Georgia, um, this is tuition by another name, yet students are still having to pay for it. At the University of Georgia, it is $450 uh, a semester. Um, and as a graduate student, we are required to be registered for, registered full time in order to get the money from our assistantships. Uh, this is even after we've completed our kind of degree coursework and when we were writing our dissertations and when we're still uh, serving as teaching assistants or research assistants. Um, so we have to pay this fee and in many ways it actually, uh, according to UGA's uh, frequently asked questions sheet about the special institutional fee, one of the things that they say it goes towards is paying graduate student stipends. Uh, so we are effectively paying ourselves um, to some extent. And uh, one other thing from the graduate student perspective is uh, in conversations that I've had with Ms. Cook and others at the University System of Georgia, um, our state is actually kind of quite competitive when it comes to uh, the cost of education that is actually borne by students and their families. Um, but from the graduate student perspective, our fees are actually among the highest uh, in the country. And from a graduate student, that is, in effect, the main cost of uh, our getting our graduate degrees. Um, so that makes the University System of Georgia, for a graduate student, um, actually more expensive than other states uh, compared. So UGA and Georgia Tech, the last uh, time we checked and compared fees to other kind of peer and aspirational institutions ranked fourth and fifth in the country uh, on that list. And uh, so this is actually driving away qualified, talented, very bright uh, graduate students who might choose to go somewhere else where fees are lower and they still have similar uh, tuition waivers uh, that we do, okay? Um, and I wanted to finally mention uh, the efforts that we've made, graduate students specifically at UGA, over the last few years. Um, we have kind of consistently called for the repeal of the special institutional fee, and our university administrators, uh, university system administrators as well, uh, kind of mention how devastating, um, that's an actual word that uh, UGA administrator said, uh, it, how devastating it would be to university budgets if we got rid of this fee. Um, but despite this, uh, our efforts have resulted in some uh, victory at the University of Georgia. We did recently get a, uh, a four to 5% um, raise in our graduate student stipends. This was meant to offset the special institutional fee. Um, however, uh, this kind of one-off solution um, is problematic for a few different reasons. One, it's only at UGA. Uh, and then two, this raise in our stipends uh, is taxed, and then the money immediately goes back to UGA. So we are essentially paying more taxes uh, just to have this special institutional fee offset. Um, so ultimately what uh, I think and my peers uh, also think is that we need a more systemic kind of change. Um, and this is ultimately going to come uh, from 
the state uh, returning the funding um, or returning funding levels for the university system of Georgia back to uh, pre recession great recession levels um, I know that the uh, funding formula kind of assumes a 75% 25% split uh, state funding 75% 25% coming from students and their families um, that has since the Great Recession climbed very slowly back up to about 50 50 um, but if we are actually interested in making Georgia's higher education competitive we need to keep it affordable so all Georgians whether or all students whether in-state or out-of-state can afford it and come and find a place where their interests are protected and taken care of um, and then hopefully they will stay and uh, continue um, to kind of uh, bolster the economic impact that a public investment in higher education will afford. Um, that is uh, the kind of spiel uh, that I have for y'all um, and again I want to thank you all for taking the time to hear me talk and to also discuss um, these fees which I think are important not only to myself and my fellow graduate students and graduate workers but also to all Georgians um, and specifically students okay do we have any questions by the study committee anybody Hi. Right. go ahead I was just going to appreciate you taking the time to come and talk into us today. And these are a lot of the issues that we've been talking about in the last few months. So, again, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. I had a question. Yes, sir. Uh, well, two, three times you referred to we and our. Are you a representative of a student organization that has uh, that's been active in this in the past in looking at this issue? I uh, am a member of the United Campus Workers of Georgia. Um, so we represent all campus workers, whether graduate students, undergraduate workers, faculty, or staff. Um, but I am also working uh, with other graduate students who are members of the United Campus Workers of Georgia, but are also members of the uh, officially recognized kind of student representative body, the Graduate Student Association at UGA. Um, and it's through those efforts uh, within the Graduate Student Association, but also through faculty senates uh, at UGA um, that we've kind of uh, made gotten this win with the recent stipend raises. The United Campus Workers, is, is that a national organization? It is part of the Communication Workers of America. Uh, UCWGA um, represents all uh, higher education employees within the University System of Georgia, uh, but it's part of the Communication Workers of America. Okay. If I understand... Uh, your statements correctly you would prefer that the institution fees be put back into the tuition on a pro rata basis of the hours taken is that correct uh, to an extent I think ultimately the more equitable solution would not be to shift this money back to tuition but to actually return state funding uh, back to the assumed levels of 75 percent 25 percent um, because if it uh, is shifted just to tuition, that might help folks like me who get graduate student uh, tuition waivers or folks on uh, Hope or Zell Miller, but others who, for whatever reasons, whether it's a GPA or out of state, those costs are still borne by those students and their families. So I think it's uh, the ultimately most equitable solution is uh, public funding, treating this as a public good. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? I appreciate your testimony. I hate that you had to drive from the University of Georgia, of Georgia and Athens to speak for 10 minutes. Happy to do it. Uh, hopefully we can get some more funding for USG. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. Uh, comments as I said I would welcome your input and recommendations of oh, I think we has we had some draft recommendations from the university system and I had a meeting earlier in the week with the chancellor and, and other representatives from the university system and we made some changes on the original draft this 
the draft that you have in your hand is is the reflects uh, the edits that I made on that. I think this is probably a good starting point for discussion of what uh, the findings of the of the committee uh, may be, and it's on that basis you the, any input you may have uh, can be either related uh, to this to this draft or either on other topics that you'd like to bring. But we, if you'll get me those to me by close of business on Friday, uh, actually, if you'll get them to me by lunch on Friday, I can uh, get them assimilated. I'll try to get a, uh, a draft piece com uh, compiled and get it out the first of the week for your input. And then probably Wednesday or Thursday, we'll shoot to have a committee meeting to, to vote on it. Any other comments, questions? Senator Harrell? Uh, yes, if this is the appropriate time, um, I had a few things in uh, copies in the folders yes, as handouts that yes, I wanted to draw attention to. Uh, and they really speak to uh, the experience of the part time student who's working through school uh, that I couldn't get to come today. So I'd like to make some remarks on behalf sure. of that population. Sure, be glad to hear it. That's okay. what we're here for. Yes, right, Thank you. right. So, you know, in between meetings, I, I do a, a lot of studying and actually read an entire book on, on the future of, of higher education. Um, so some of this is, is from that. Um, first off, there's a handout. Uh, it's tiny print and kind of hard to see. Uh, especially for those of us who are getting older. <laughs> um, but it's the, <laughs> it's the enrollment report from um, the University System of Georgia. And, and what it shows is that um, the number of part-time students uh, is rather high. Um, it breaks it down by type of, of school. Uh, but overall, um, percent of full-time enrollment is 67 point, I think it says 9%. So basically, we're looking at a third of the students from uh, University System Georgia are not able to enroll full time for the you know the four year college experience, and and that percentage goes up um, for the particularly for the state colleges. So we're talking about when we talk about part time students and the fee and the fact that they're paying. Um, a much higher amount for their degree because they're in school longer and they're paying 100% of fees when they take two classes. Um, this is affecting a lot of our of our students. Um, secondly, there's a chart that I created a couple of years ago. It looks like like this um, that takes what minimum wage was in 1981 and what tuition was in 1981 and, and calculates uh, how many hours you would have to earn or work to earn the same amount of money or how much you'd have to actually work per hour to earn the same uh, amount of, of tuition to, that, that you're paying, tuition dollars. And you would actually compare it to 1981 in order um, to um, earn the same amount of money to pay the amount of tuition you did in 1981, you'd actually have to make like $46 an hour to earn the same an amount of, of tuition dollars. Um, so this is the challenge that our, our students are facing. Um, and lastly, there's a news article um, that was actually written by a student at Kennesaw State about a student. And the student's name is Steve Rios. And I did reach out to him to see if he could come, but I, I wasn't able to, to find him. Um, but he was a student who was working and trying to pay tuition, going to school part time. And he realized that. Uh, he was going to it was going to take him a long time to go to finish school and he was going to pay so much more because of of the fees that he actually made the decision to stop working so that he could go to school not only full time but take even more than 15 hours 
because once you hit 15, you don't have to pay more. So he was taking like 17 and 18 hours uh, in order to pack the classes in to get done sooner so he wouldn't have to pay the fees every semester. Um, he had to take out a student loan to do that. So in the end, he finished faster, he paid fewer fees, but he had $10,000 of, of debt to pay back. But that was still a better deal for him than um, going to school part-time, working and, and paying all those fees. Um, I might add, he was a finance major. Okay, so he figured this out. Not every student is going to be able to figure out that works better for them, but also not every student can quit working. Because when you're working and going to school, you're earning cash. And oftentimes that cash is actually paying for your rent or your family's rent or your family's groceries or a myriad of different situations that would uh, preclude a person from being able to do what this student do, did and quit his job and take out a loan um, because they need that that cash and that that's the real struggle and that's why we are here is is that's the real struggle of what these students are facing and and the fact of the matter that they take eight years say to finish a degree two classes at a time they're paying a hundred percent fees when they take two classes so you can calculate that by the time they get done they've paid thousands and thousands of dollars more for their degree and so that's a big obstacle to finishing a college degree and and gaining the upward mobility that they're trying to to gain. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Do you, do you have anything else you'd like to cover that are this information in the packet or otherwise? <clears throat> I think, you know, over the course of our work that we did in this committee, uh, we began by focusing on how many fees that we have. Uh, and there was a lot of discussion at our first meeting about the, the fees that have debt dot tied to them. The public, what was it, PPV? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, there we go. I learned the acronym. Um, and I realized over the course of time that those fees are smaller. And so I realized we'd get more bang for the buck if we really focused on the fees that are, are high dollar. And that ends up being the athletic fee and the special institution fee. Now, the athletic fee, I'm not going into that ter territory. Talk about hard politics. <laughs> but the special institution fee was really created, that is the biggest fee uh, of all of them. And it was, it was put in place after the recession, and it was supposed to be temporary. Yet here we are, and it's, it's still there. And, and I think that politically, um, that's the easier thing to address. Um, and I think that it, if we deal with removing the special institution fee and fixing the funding formula so that that becomes tuition rather than fee or that becomes the state helping to subsidize tuition, then we are helping the most people with that action. We're not only helping the part-time students, but we are helping everyone um, by taking care, by, by, by um, moving away from the special institution fee and um, moving back to the state contribution uh, to higher education that, that the state does for, for everyone. And, and I think that that, that action alone um, would help the greatest number of people. Okay. Any other comment? I'll make one. All right. All right, Chancellor. So I'm actually going to be relatively short and really just thank you, Chairman, and also uh, Senator Harrell for having a lot of conversations with us throughout this process. And I know we've had a lot of conversations in smaller meetings, but I do think that was very productive to be able to understand all of the details and as a system what we're trying to accomplish. So I just want to thank both of you. And, I, and I'll echo that from the legislative standpoint. It's been refreshing to work through problems instead of the legislature being on one side saying, we're going to mandate this and you have to do it, and the other side saying, well, you don't really understand. We've tried to come to a point of understanding of both sides, the concerns and also the limitations. Um, and I think as you get into that, and I've been very, very impressed with the willingness to work together on this uh, 
venture. I think we'll come with some good recommendations, and I, and hopefully they will be practical, and also uh, feasible to to institute. I, I mean, the legislature sometimes has a tendency tendency to say this is what we're going to mandate this is what's going to be done and then you may find out uh, you may not you may have overstepped just a little bit and I think human nature is we're hesitant to acknowledge we've overstepped so I, I thank all of the participants in this venture of, of the openness and the willingness to work more toward a solution rather than just trying to make a political statement and uh, we, and I think we've been very successful uh, and getting the issues on the table and having open and honest discussions. And I look forward to being able to wrap it up next week, hopefully with f findings and recommendations of a study committee uh, that will not only be informative as to what we have d seen and learned about this matter, but also uh, may help to guide future legislation that deals with this issue and setting policy for the state. And that being said, if there's no other comments, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.